Humans have always harnessed technology to shape our lives, but now technology is beginning to shape us in ways we once only imagined. Enter the world of brain implants or brain computer interfaces, also known as BCIs for short. This technology is at the forefront of a potential transformation, creating a direct link between our brains and external devices. Through these neural interfaces, users can control computers, prosthetics, and more, using only their thoughts. But this technology isn't just about convenience, it's offering new hope to people with paralysis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and more conditions caused by neurological issues by intercepting brain signals that would otherwise be lost. This aspect of a computer being implanted into the brain through invasive surgery often scares people, with fears rooted in science fiction depicting the life of cyborgs and technology taking over the world. But that's fiction. What does reality tell us about how these things work and their long-term benefits? Let's dive in. Brain-computer interfaces, also known as neural interfaces, are essentially bridges between the brain and external devices. These neuroprostheses record and transmit neuronal activity to external devices such as a computer prosthetic or maybe one day passive exoskeleton. The external devices then translate the activity into digital input, improving over time as machine learning improves. This allows it to build a personalized dictionary of neural activity and the user's intended outcomes. Over the years, BCIs have seen some significant milestones. In 2002, the first demonstration of a monkey controlling a computer cursor took place. Six years later, in 2008, a monkey used a brain-controlled robotic arm to feed itself. Following that, the first human used a brain-controlled robotic arm in 2012. More advancements took place, but in 2021, Neuralink, a major player in the field, released a video of a monkey playing ping pong using only its mind. This paved the way for the first human trials of Neuralink's wireless brain chip in 2024, which leads us to our next topic, the different types of brain implants. BCIs come in various forms, each with unique applications. Some BCIs are implanted directly into the brain, making them particularly effective at reading neural signals due to their proximity to the neurons they monitor. Medical professionals determine the best placement for these implants through brain mapping, using scans from MRIs, EEGs, and electrocorticography recordings. Other BCIs are placed on the surface of the brain or inside nearby blood vessels such as the superior sagittal sinus or SSS for short, which runs along the top of the brain. A notable example is the stentrode, an electrode line stent that can be implanted in the SSS near the primary motor cortex in the brain. Stentrodes have enabled ALS patients to perform instrumental activities of daily living, like communicating and managing finances by translating their neural activity into digital commands. For those who prefer a non-surgical approach, non-invasive BCIs are also an option. These devices, like EEGs, technically known as electroencephalograms, have been around for decades and record the brain's electrical activity from outside the skull. While this approach can be less precise than implanted devices, non-invasive BCIs still hold significant potential, particularly as technology advances. Now, BCIs aren't just about recording brain signals. They can also send information into the brain through a process known as deep brain stimulation. This is when electrodes implanted in the brain electrically stimulate neurons to regulate abnormal signaling, such as in Parkinson's, or mitigate mental health conditions including OCD and treatment-resistant depression. By electrically stimulating neurons, DBS can correct faulty signaling and improve patient outcomes. By sending brain signals past damaged neurons into other regions such as the spinal cord, BCIs could potentially restore movement or other lost functions. This ability alone to bypass damaged pathways effectively opens new possibilities for rehabilitation and therapy. However, with the rapid development of BCIs also comes the rise of a new wave of ethical concerns over neural data being collected. In April 2024, Colorado became the first U.S. state to address these issues, amending its privacy laws to include protections for neural data. As BCIs evolve, so too do concerns about the potential to manipulate behavior, implant false memories, or infringe on personal autonomy. 
there are also medical risks to consider. Implanting foreign objects in the brain can lead to complications like infections and the formation of scar tissue. Long-term effects are still unknown, especially when it comes to stimulating the brain with electricity. There's a risk that the brain could adapt to this new input in ways we don't fully understand yet. Beyond medical risks, the early stage of BCI development presents practical concerns. What happens if an implant's manufacturer goes out of business or stops supporting the technology? Users could be left with obsolete or unsupported devices, creating significant challenges for those who rely on these implants for daily activities. Brain-computer interfaces represent a significant leap in human technology interaction, but the path forward will require careful consideration of the ethical, medical, and practical challenges involved. If you learned something new in this video, consider giving us a thumbs up, and if you want to continue down your path for knowledge, subscribe to our channel.